Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Health Force Podcast. I am your host, Fran Ramsden, RamsdenFitness.com, RamsdenLeadFitness.com. If you want to see uh, photos of nutrition and different meals for a high protein diet or my take on common foods, you can head uh, to our Instagram page, Ramsley Fitness, and for videos on exercising and uh, even some short film stuff, uh, check us out on Facebook, Ramsley Fitness, there as well. I want to start by suggesting that if you've not listened to our Health Force podcast episode number 45, that is a good place to start today. Uh, it's one of the most practical episodes we ever did, and it's it was on um, how to weigh in properly and measure your success in the gym. And I think too many people go about that the wrong way and put too much stock into either one form of measurement or they become emotionally tied to their progress on a week-to-week basis instead of thinking six-month basis. So episode 45 of the Health Force podcast, you can find it on iTunes or our website, clicking on the latest research tab at the top. So today, though, we're going into battle. We are heading into a filthy arena, in my opinion, the supplement industry. Uh, it's probably the most miss, uh, the most commonly misinformed aspect of the fitness industry. Certainly, all three are awful. If you look at in general, the big picture, this industry is still not very good in terms of value that we're giving clientele. And when I say we, I'm speaking in generalities about the entire industry to everybody in it. The majority of us, the majority of this industry is just not focused on the right things right now. And it's been that way for some time. But with the advent of in the internet obviously taking off, becoming like the big thing of our of our time right now, um, social media able to share and distribute content uh, rapidly, we are now in an age where misinformation rules the day because people don't have four hours every day to research the kinds of things that, that they need to in order to understand marketing or actually to understand something as complicated as fitness, nutrition, or supplementation. And that's honestly part of the reason why I'm doing the podcast. You're going to get high-value content that you can trust in 30 to 45 minutes once a week on a, on a given topic. And if you become somebody that fi- finds this information useful, you're able to literally start to create knowledge in this arena without having to stu- you know go to school for this for four years to study it. I'm, I'm just trying to give as much value as I can on topics that I think are going to be relevant to you in the audience. And before I get into today's podcast, I, again, I want to speak about this thing about trusting us. Like, I want to earn your trust too. Like, this is the thing. I'm not looking to have people neglectfully just follow what we preach at Ramsley Fitness or the, the kinds of topics that we're on this podcast and even my opinions. Like, by all means, I want you to do your own research, but I'm, I'm doing a lot of the legwork. My, te- you know, my, where I'm coming from is I'm trying to do the legwork for you. And as I earn your trust, as you listen to more and more episodes, you don't have you don't feel the need to like go deep into every single topic as maybe you do the first time you hear this podcast, and maybe you, you know on the face of something you disagree with me, and you're, and you're like, "Well, that doesn't sound right." You know, let, let me do some more research into this. And on this program, we know we cite our sources. You're able to go look them up, look at the individuals that we're referencing, look at their qualifications, and then look at the common opinion out there in the industry, and then just you know b- battle the two in your mind. And I think eventually over time, you will realize that we're not messing around in this program. We're going really, really deep into stuff and condensing it into that 30 to 45 minute um, segment of our podcast here. And I hopefully earn your trust. That's what I want to do. Today's uh, podcast, we're going to talk about grass-fed whey protein. I'm going to give you a 20-second little uh, starter here about, you know, try to set the stage a little bit, give some context to today's podcast. We've got three videos to hop into, followed by three product reviews, and wrapping up with um, some science and research articles, three of them. And um, there's a lot to get to today, so I'm pretty pumped about it. It's going to be uh, heavy information, heavy content, so if you're driving the car, seatbelt, put it on. Uh, eyes focus on the road. Perk the ears up. If you're doing laundry, that's great. I love multitasking. Perk the ears up. Uh, There's going to be a ton of information today uh, that that I think is going to really add to your knowledge base about supplementation and going against common perceptions uh, about uh, certain specific protein products. Um, Marketing and social media distribution 
has pulled the industry down even further, in my opinion. Let me explain. I think since information is so easily digestible scrolling through your news feed on a social media platform and some guy with his shirt off or some guy that's jacked out of his mind is telling you something, you tend to believe it in that 45-second video without doing any additional research to it. It's seductive. It seems like it's coming from a knowledgeable source, somebody that has the information, and you tend to believe it, and it sounds good. Oftentimes, what if you really, really break down these internet experts or these fake, uh, these pseudoscientists, I like to call them fanatics, if you would, they're really, really, really good at emotionally connecting with you through fear, which is AKA fear mongering, uh, sensationalism, making something that's very, very simple sound really, really complicated and make it almost sound cool. And then they always are here to push their solution or push their product on you in an attempt to get a sale. That's really in a nutshell. So my 20 second starter on protein powders. There's a variety of forms, pea protein, hemp protein, whey protein, casein protein. There are a ton of different sources. Essentially, there's a process where they find that food source, they isolate and pull out the protein away from the fat, away from the carbs, away from the you know the actual food source to essentially get as much protein as they can without the other stuff, put it into a powder form, put it into a bottle, and ship it to your house. Um, the benefit of it is that it allows you, if you're on a high or even a moderate protein diet, to increase your grams of protein that you're able to eat a day without having to eat an entire chicken breast. It's a lot easier to drink a protein shake than it is to eat a chicken breast in terms of the digestibility and how fast before you can eat again. So that's the real perk. If you're, if you're having to eat 150 or 200 grams of protein a day, being able to have two or three scoops of protein powder, you know, talking 50 to 100 grams just from that, man, it makes things a lot easier. So it's a product that has a lot of benefit to it. Unfortunately, it's becoming corrupted by uh, the fanatics and pseudoscientists. So I'm going to start with a video by our, uh, he's been on a podcast before in terms of using him as a source for video and audio, uh, Thomas DeLauer. Again, I don't remember the guy's credentials or anything. Uh, I think he's just one of these guys that's a, pretty much a men's health celebrity trainer because he's jacked as, as can be. He does his videos in the tightest V-neck shirt possible, probably from his eighth grade little brother or something. And people tend to look at him. He's an attractive man, and people tend to think, okay, well, look, he must know what he's doing then. And unfortunately, like everybody else, Thomas, in my opinion, it, you know, links you to his website. He gives, he makes videos that are essentially uh, hooks and sales wrapped up in information. And instead of giving it to you, the information for free, he gives you like a little teaser and then directs you to his website where he's going to sell you a product. And that's the common theme. In comparison, our podcast, 30 to 45 minutes of information, I'm trying to give you tons of value and, and do topics that are completely relevant to you. And then at the end, I don't ask you to go buy my product. I just, pff, that's the end of it. Hey, cool. Hope you hope you listen to more episodes next week or something. Like that, that's the end of it for me. So I, I'm not into this sort of gimmicking video type stuff that's being put on social media. And I'm sure you've seen this guy. He's um he's quite frequently on, on, on social media right now. I'm gonna play a video. It's uh, from his YouTube page, Thomas Delauer, uh, grass fed whey protein isolate. Here we are. But where does grass fed come into this? Where does that even play a part? Well, ordinarily, this is where I would tout the benefits of the omega-3 to omega-6 profile of grass-fed beef. You see, cows that are raised on pasture usually have higher levels of omega-3 fats, which can help counterbalance the high levels of omega-6 fats that are naturally occurring in our body from our diets. I got to give him props right from the get-go. Um, he's exactly correct. The main benefits of organic food, specifically when it comes to like dairy cows or the beef from cows, it, it lies in the fat content. Uh, higher concentrations, uh, more of, of the healthier fats, the omega fats that your body uses. Um, that's where the real benefit is. There are some increases in CLA, things like that. And so he's absolutely correct on that. However, you can tell he's almost sit, uh, creating that moment where he's going to say, but, and then tell you why it doesn't matter. So let's keep listening. See, omega-6 fats, when we consume them, they can trigger what are called 
interleukin-1, interleukin-6, interleukin-10 antagonists, all stimulated by leukotrienes, which is just a fancy way of saying inflammatory markers that can make it hard for us to absorb our nutrients and can really just make it hard for us to live a healthy, pain-free life. Now, I'm stopping because I, I do want to interject here for just three seconds on this topic. I think it's important. This is the sensationalism I'm talking about. He's making something very, very simple, something complicated, using the scientific names, interleukin-1, interleukin-6. That's all in an attempt to get you to trust him as a source because he's, he's using big words that you don't know about. You're going to automatically assume that he's smarter than you in this arena. Okay? That's it. So keep that in mind going forward. Just because somebody uses all these terms and language doesn't mean that they're somehow qualified to speak on the topic. I actually, if you've noticed, very rarely use scientific terms. And even with my clientele, I don't sit there and list out every single muscle by its scientific name. I'll just say you're back because people understand that. And that's what I'm in the business of is communication. I don't care that people have the perception that I'm like so much smarter than them because I use longer words. Okay. So that's just something I want to point out that anytime somebody uses big words, you should learn that that doesn't mean anything. But here's the thing. Unfortunately, when it comes to whey protein isolate, that doesn't really matter because we've already isolated the protein away from the fats. So we're not really getting the omega-3 and omega-6 anyway. So where's the benefit with grass-fed? Well, again, again, hats off. Thomas DeLauer is exactly correct. When you go through a protein powder process where they're isolating the fat um, and the protein to get make the powder, the fat from organic food does not come with the protein powder. The protein is isolated. And the protein, the 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 um, the structure of protein in organic uh, beef or organic sources does not change simply because of, of organics or grass fed. So where's the real benefit? He's right. There is no benefit. Let's see. Let's see his claims. It comes down to this, and this is of course in addition to the fact that pasture raised beef and pasture raised cattle are generally more ethically treated, which I stand behind wholeheartedly. But it comes down to the antibiotics and the hormones. You see, a lot of the dairy industry might disagree with me, but when you have cattle that are raised in confined areas, when they're in slaughterhouses or when they're in milk houses or any kind of dairy plants or dairy farms, a lot of times they're so compacted that they have to give them antibiotics to fight off bacteria and disease simply by being in close quarters with each other. Now, when you take pasture-raised beef for pasture-raised cattle, a lot of times that doesn't exist. They don't have to give them as much in the way of antibiotics because there's not as much disease that they have to worry about. But why is this so difficult? Well, it's difficult because that costs a lot of money. You need a lot of land. You need a lot of space. You need a lot more space for each individual cow than you do compared to a typical milk. All right. I don't want him getting too far ahead before I make some points. Um, once again, uh, I agree with him on the ethics of protein or even beef in general. If you're somebody that has a massive problem with, way, with the way that some specific farms or non-organics raise their cattle and treat them in terms of having them into a um, you know like a barn-like structure or a facility, and they don't get to roam free. If that bothers you, bothers you to the point where you want to spend money on organic and support that movement, go ahead. Um, I don't. My opinion, I think, off the top of my head, is I don't think eighty to ninety percent of us have that as the deciding factor on our protein products. I think m- many of us are looking at price. Um, we're going to look at quality of the protein, um, but by all means, you know, ethics, certainly go for it. Uh, I'm not going to be somebody to knock you for that. Uh, he's, he's mentioned the hormones and the antibiotics. I think this is an important part. So here, this is where we perk your ears up, perk, perk them up here. He's making the case about antibiotics and hormones. Now, I'm not going to give my opinion on this until the end when we get to the science and research. Um, I want to let him talk a little bit here so you can see where he's coming from. What's the point that he's trying to make? Um, and so that this is this is the tagline that he's going to go with here is the hormones and antibiotics that the that the cows that are not in a grass fed organic uh, type of environment that they're going to have versus the ones that are organic and grass fed that, that are not going to have that as much. So let's let's let him go a little bit longer. Over dairy plant. Now this does have a trickle effect when it comes into our bodies, and there's a lot of science that's starting to back this up. When we consume a lot of antibiotics, even if it's through the food that we eat, we can start developing an antibiotic resistance. But even more so, it can affect our gut biome. When we affect our gut biome, we are directly affecting the kind of nutrients that we can absorb. If you've ever done a round of antibiotics, a lot of times the doctor will tell you to make sure you take a probiotic and make sure you eat a lot of prebiotic fiber to help. All right, well, I'm not going to let him ramble on about this. We're going to skip ahead here a little bit, but... 
you have heard the case from Thomas about organic and um, or the antibiotics and the hormone structure. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Exclusive, but it's enough for me to make a decision, that's for sure. Now, another thing you want to look at is the quality of life with a cow, obviously. You've got the omega-3. We are talking about this. Much better with that cow, which means protein density is going to be better. Probably just an overall quality of life and higher quality of milk product in general. But again, that could be somewhat theoretical. The one I really want to focus yes, on is. is that antibiotic focus. Now, the other thing I want you to pay attention to when you're looking at an overall whey protein supplement or a whey protein isolate is what is it sweetened with? You know, is it sweetened with stevia? Is it sweetened with sucralose? Is it sweetened with aspartame? We have to look at these things because what good is going through all the effort to pick a high quality product if it's sweetened with something that's going to counteract all the positive benefit? Well, look, uh, Thomas, that is incorrect. Um, we did an entire podcast, folks, on artificial sweeteners already. Um, I'm going to pull that out for you get, get you the number. There is no – if you go to our website, uh, ramsofthefitness.com, we have an article titled, Should You, Feel Artifi- Should you Fear Artificial Sweeteners? Uh, go ahead and give that a quick read. Uh, we dive into – um, the science behind that and compile the research. Look, the artificial sweeteners are not a, are not a concern, not a concern. So, this is a six minute video of what I would call almost rambling. But here we go. We're almost done. All right. So, if you're, if you're somebody that's annoyed by Thomas, hold on. We're almost there. Almost there. Now, when you look at sucralose, for instance, sucralose has been shown in multiple studies recently to kill off about fifty percent of your naturally occurring. Okay. Here's what we do. Let's not cherry pick science, Thomas. You can't just come out and say, "Well, there's been a few studies that show this." There's a few. There's a few. Uh, there's probably a few studies that show Pluto should still be a planet. Okay, there are millions, or not millions. What am I talking about? Now, see, now I'm starting to get in the habit. These guys have a way to suck you in and become sensational. There's tons of studies on a variety of topics, and you could find. If you're going to just go for that route and look to cherry pick studies, you'll find something that supports. It's called confirmation bias, where you already have your opinion and you look for sources to confirm that instead of doing what we do in the podcast and what I do in my in my personal life, look at the body of evidence and then make my opinion on, on that. So just so just because again, because somebody cites something like, oh, there's studies that show this. Again, it means absolutely nothing if there's not a context in a majority of research. That's what you should look for. What does the majority, 60, 70% of the research say, not one or two or a few studies? Gut bacteria. That takes us right back to that antibiotic discussion. Killing off the bacteria means you're not absorbing as much. So here's my advice to you. Find a product that contains the right kind of high-quality grass-fed whey protein isolate and is sweetened with the right kind of sweetener. Now, I'm not the kind of guy that always endorses products. You don't see me <laughs> touting sponsorships. You don't see me touting endorsements. But I do like to give shout outs to companies that I think are going the extra mile because I know how expensive it is to find the right kind of pasture raised and pasture finished beef. I know how expensive it is to get a quality product. And I know how expensive it is to go through the right kind of FDA guidelines to get the right kind of designation for non-GMO or organic food products. So that's why I did want to give a shout out to Antler Farms, who has a nice, high quality New Zealand whey protein isolate. And it's sweetened, believe it or not, with stevia. So they've gone the extra mile in a lot of different directions. And again, although I'm not endorsed by them, I like to give shout outs to companies that I think deserve it and actually care about our health. Because when you go to the grocery store and you're picking the food that you're putting in your body, you should be putting that same focus on whatever supplement you're putting in your body. Should be- right. So um, I'm fair. I, you know, I'm fine with the ending there. Um... People are certainly allowed to to promote products they enjoy. Um, we on this podcast uh, have mentioned our favorite supplement brands uh, for a variety of things, whether that's multivitamins, pre workouts, protein powders. We've certainly talked brands. Uh, we're we're not endorsed or paid by anybody to advertise, so that's the thing. There is, if you really want to look into that more, it's one thing to say you're endorsed by, like you know, like you're a celebrity endorser or something. It's another thing if you have product placement ads, which essentially is what this could be. I don't know, and I don't really care. Um, but just be aware sometimes if people have products, and that's the kind of loop around not looking like a salesman is that they just say like, well, look, you know, I just like pro, you know, I, I like to push products that I think are really, really good, and then maybe that company slips them a couple bucks for doing the video. Again, not saying it happened here, and it's really overlapping here. Well, let's move on. We actually have a video by Antler Farms. So this is the company that Thomas DeLauer just and uh, 
promoted on the last video. This is called Why is Grass-Fed Protein Better for You? Antler Farms Whey Protein Isolate. Right off of Antler Farms' YouTube page. I will warn you, when I was pre-going through this video, it sounds like a monotone robot. So if you're somebody that is, that's going to fall asleep at the wheel, turn this off now and listen to it when you get home. Uh, if you're doing laundry, be careful that you're able to, to, to maintain, uh, you know, maintain your audible uh, sensory skills right now because this is going to be hard to listen to. Here we go. Three minutes or so. Antler Farms Whey Protein Isolate begins with high-grade dairy from grass-fed cows. Our cows are raised in the Canterbury region of beautiful New Zealand, where they roam outdoors, are exposed to fresh air and sunlight, and feed on green pasture year-round. These ideal living conditions are the cornerstone of raising cows that are naturally robust and healthy. Cows are ruminants, a type of animal with multiple stomachs. Their digestive system is specifically designed to absorb nutrients from fresh grass. When a cow eats an appropriate diet of green grass, they maintain an ideal body composition and stay in optimal health. Most whey protein powders are made from milk from factory farm cows. Factory farm cows are confined to feedlots where they are fed corn and grain. Studies show that cows fed high grain diets have a higher incidence of metabolic disorders than grass fed cows caused by the buildup of toxic, inflammatory, and unnatural compounds. Furthermore, factory farm cows are pumped full of growth hormones and antibiotics. Growth hormones genetically engineered by Monsanto stimulate milk production while... Uh, I, got, got, I have to cut in. I understand the whole idea of marketing and... Uh, you know, trying to compare yourself to your competition and try to separate yourself. But I do have a problem when people go too far on certain things and try to distort truths. Look, if, again, I want to mention, if it's an ethical thing for you, if you don't like cows that are in a factory or housed inside in a facility, um, if that's something that really, really, really bothers you and that takes priority over quality of your actual supplement or the price that you're going to pay, by all means, make the decision to, to buy off of a farm or something or a, cup, a supplement company that uses free range uh, grass fed. Completely fine. I don't care. I will never pick an argument over you over ethics about this. However, if we're going to talk science, and we're going to talk the facts, this nonsense about, oh, these cows are so poisoned, they're tox, you know, they're toxic, they're just... They're barely alive. They're pumped with so many. They're like a freak show. They're Frankenstein. It's not on that level. That is fear mongering. And unfortunately, that's something that stirs emotions in people and allows uh, opinions to be formed around that. Um, look, if you go to a farmer, okay, and you talk to them about their facility and they have, they house cows on the inside, go ahead and ask that individual if they care about the cow. Go ahead. I think that this idea that farmers are emotionless, mean-spirited, vindictive, hateful people is absurd. It really is absurd. Um, if you buy beef off, you know, if the kind of beef you're consuming is from an indoor facility, you are not consuming toxic whatever, the sludge and all these disease filled meat like it's not that whatsoever and then they drop the big the big buzzword the monsanto oh my god the monsanto they develop all these chemicals you know what monsanto does a lot of good i'm not a monsanto hater developing fertilizers so that our crops don't die yeah get, put this, wrap this around your head there was a point in time where our hunter gatherer farming days our ag agrarian days where we're planting an entire crop could completely crap the bed an entire year and people would starve to death or you wouldn't be able to sell your crops that that farm cycle because your stuff died through you know insects and uh, the weather was bad and I, I mean do we understand that that's where we came from to now individuals or companies like Monsanto producing different fertilizers and different chemicals that allow our crops to grow and that they're not toxic they do not harm us do you really think we that we would be creating a society and a culture based on farmed vegetables and fruits and everything else where it's poisonous to us, just put yourself in Monsanto's shoes. Hey, guys, guess what? We, we were able to develop a product that allows your vegetables to repel insects. But guess what? It kills you. Like, let's put some common sense in this. Get away from the fear-mongering. Get away from the sensationalism. And let's boil it down to basics. Okay? Let's continue on the video. Antibiotics keep the cows from getting sick in crowded, filthy living conditions. 
Most commercially available protein powders on the market today are full of artificial ingredients. Nearly every product contains an artificial sweetener like sucralose or aspartame. Xanthan gum, a polymer secreted by microorganisms, is a common ingredient that is used as a thickening agent. And- I do have a question for those that are really out on a witch hunt. Fire, torches, pitchforks for artificial ingredients. What's your big argument? Like, what's your solution? Should we go back to, like, the 1700s? Should science and research not develop new synthesized products? Like, are we not supposed to create anything? I mean, I hate to inform you, but if you're against GMOs, go research what a natural banana looks like or broccoli or a green bean or a carrot Look at these things without the intervention of man. And essentially what we do with GMOs is we we are able to culture the best qualities of vegetables and almost to make that the norm. So, for instance, a, a natural banana without any GMO, like a, truly how bananas were, there's seeds all up in it. You can't bite into it. We've been able to find that, you know, again, I'm not... I'm not a, a researcher and a science engineer, so I, I don't know exactly all this, 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 you know, what's happening on the cell level. But essentially, we're able to take like the gene mutations or the actual, the best qualities of a banana and be able to essentially create a new banana that doesn't have the seeds in it. It's still a damn banana, it just doesn't have the seeds. Like for me, this is a good thing. Te- technology advancement is good. The fact that we're going to have AI technology, robots, like in the future, like that's a good thing for me. I'm not one of these guys that wants to go only eat what's in the ground and what walks on the planet. Like we're not going to go back to the 1700s. These people need to get with the program. Science on itself, on the face of it, is just not bad just because it's human intervention. So saying something is just naturally occurring, or whatever, like that, that alone does nothing for me and should do nothing for you. Don't buy into the fear-mongering of artificial or man-made ingredients. They're there for a reason to provide benefit. If somebody, the free market always reigns true. If you create a product or an ingredient, like let's say you're an individual and you created sucralose, right? You created an artificial uh, sweetener. If this, not only do you have to pass several, and in this case, decades of research to prove that your product is safe for consumption. And, and then on top of that, you can provide the benefit. You can't just do one or the other. You can't just be safe and do nothing. And then you can't provide benefit but also cause harm to people. Like this isn't just something that just was created last year and we're consuming and not really knowing what's going on. Like <laughs> go look at the body of evidence. On, on, again, check out our podcast on artificial sweeteners. I ran through an entire... I think there were 300 studies or peer reviews and all kind of stuff on that. Go through that. It is not something that's brand new we don't know about. We know about artificial sweeteners. They're safe for consumption. End of story. Let's move on from this stupid talking point. And soy lecithin, a food additive made from genetically modified soy, is used as a standard emulsifier. Whey protein powders may also be contaminated with synthetic additives, chemical detergents, and heavy metals. Studies suggest that every single one of the above ingredients and pollutants may cause serious health risks. At Antler Farms, our goal was to create the highest quality whey protein isolate using only the best source of grass-fed protein and other natural ingredients. This light, ultra-clean formulation provides loads of protein, amino acids, immune factors, peptides, antioxidants, and minerals without any harmful artificial ingredients, fillers, allergens, or chemical residues. Our whey protein isolate is hormone-free and antibiotic-free. There are no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. It is gluten-free, soy-free, and GMO-free. Our product is also screened for biological impurities such as E. coli, yeast, mold, and salmonella. Antler Farms whey protein isolate is cold processed using a technologically advanced ion exchange and ultrafiltration technique. Unlike traditional methods of ion exchange, our state-of-the-art processing does not use heat, chemicals, or acid, which can cause denaturation, a process in which protein loses its molecular structure. Denaturation destroys protein's biological nature, degrades the protein quality, and reduces the protein content. Low-quality whey protein powders are heat-treated, bleached, and acid-flushed, and thus become stripped of its biological activity. Our process isolates and purifies protein subfractions and peptides while preserving the biological nature of the protein. 
It increases the protein concentration and removes almost all lactose and fat, yielding a premium quality whey protein isolate with high protein content, rapid absorption, and high bioavailability. All right, so I wanted him to go off on that. Uh, so I gave you the full context without interruption. That was their big pitch about why to buy their product. All right, and if you think about it, high protein content was their first point. Rapid, rapid absorption number two and high bioavailability number high. three as like their big three points. Well, guess what? Almost every single protein powder in the market is going to have high protein content compared to fat and carbohydrate. Uh, any any whey protein product is going to have rapid absorption. Whey protein is the fastest uh, absor- absorbing protein uh, in powder form. And high bi- bioavailability, same thing. It's easily digestible. Um, you absorb practically uh, 100% of it. goes in the bloodstream and breaks the amino acids immediately. So... Again, that's their pitch. The three the three benefits that they tout there at the end um, are in every single protein product. Their big talking point, again, is going to be that antibiotic hormone thing. So we're starting to see a theme, right? We've got one more video, one more, and uh, this is another person that's going to be talking about grass-fed dairy and or grass-fed hormone, uh, whey protein. And then we're going to get into some product reviews quickly and then uh, wrap up with the research and then uh, give you my take on this whole thing. So what's the beef with our beef? I get this question a lot and there's a lot of confusion out there between conventional grain-fed beef and then grass-fed beef. And what's the difference and why should we care? So let's start with 80% of the beef that we find at our grocery store and that is conventional or grain-fed beef. Well, the problem with that, and why I always recommend grass-fed... Give me one second. I want to give this lady a shout-out. Her name is Jill Wernes, W-E-R-N-E-S-S, on her YouTube page. Video titled, Why Grass-Fed Beef, Dairy, and Whey Are Supreme. Dairy, grass-fed beef, grass-fed whey protein to my clients. Is that the conventional way, those cattle have been raised in very tight quarters, um, very stressful conditions. They've been injected with antibiotics. Now, I actually, I, I have a severe problem with this. It's one thing if ethics is important to you. It's another thing when you have, I don't know what the hell she is, some sort of health, health coach or something. Let me see if I can find something on her here in her profile. I cannot. Um, it's one thing if you find that that's a big priority for you. It's another for your coach to force her ethics upon you. I can't stand that. To me, I despise that. So the fact that that's the first thing out of the gates, out of the first thing out of her mouth is, let me tell you why I, I push these products to my clients. Well, these cows are just raised in such a tight environment. And like, look, for you, great. If that bothers you, Mrs. Jill Wernus, good for you. But for you now to only recommend overpriced protein powders to your clients because of ethics, to me is absurd. Let's continue with her. Hormones, their food has been sprayed with pesticide. And when you're eating a diet primarily of grain, it raises the sugar level within the body. And it changes the unique ratio of the omega-6 and 3s that are supposed to be in beef. Beef is a really healthy product, but what man has done to it has messed it up. Um, I, folks, I literally, I can't contain myself. I'm trying to do a good job. Just put, put some context. This entire podcast, I'm letting these individuals speak and set their stage. Let them argue to you as why you should have grass fed way. And I'm really trying not to get into the science yet to really just destroy their arguments. I'm not trying to get there yet. So first off, would these people give me the same benefit? Would they allow me to speak freely and, and like let the context be set for 20 minutes, for 30 minutes, and then come in at the end and, and like try, try to give the, you know, refute my claims? Would they do that? The answer is no. But I tell you what, I'm literally on my last, last limb to try to keep myself contained. They, they are such throwbacks when it comes to science. Like, what's the answer? Like, to, here's... I can't stand because they're all theological. They're all these arguments that are like almost a cult-like religion about food, nutrition, and supplements. And they have no alternative. What is your alternative? You don't want man-made anything? No science advancement? No technology if man has a say in it? So what? Our food just for forever just stays the way it is? Do you, do you in the audience know right now we could feed the entire planet if individuals like Jer, Jill Wernus were to get the hell out of the way and let scientists and researchers and nutrition uh, engineers and, and people in the laboratory do more work on GMOs and create maybe 
doesn't matter what food source it is, corn, grain, soy. They can feed the entire continent of, let's say, Africa, which is notorious for starvation and disease. We can feed the planet right now. But we're restricted by fools like this who want to get on their soapbox and talk to all of us about, man, it's so awful. We are so bad for the planet. We destroy each other and the food, and we're getting in the way. I really can't take it. She's got another maybe minute and a half on here. Let's see if I, if I can get through without having to cut her off and, sh- and close the video window. So I say to folks, stay away from that. Go for grass-fed beef if, if you can. And we're talking about grass-fed and grass-finished. And so why is that so great? Well, it has that perfect ratio of omega-6s and omega-3s. And that's really important because in our society right now, all of our processed foods are full of partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. There's vegetable oils in almost every uh, food on your pantry shelf. And so that's raising inflammation within the body. All of that omega-6s. No, inflammation. Omega-6s. Inflammation is one of the biggest buzzwords out there for alternative medicine and these uh, pseudoscientists. It's funny that they can't ever direct us to like direct inflammation and what's causing that, the actual markers, nothing. They just say, oh, we're just inflamed and we get sick. Okay, cool. Keep speaking in generalities. It's dominant. And so you really want that beautiful ratio of six and three, and we get that from grass-fed beef. Plus, it's how God intended for our cattle to be raised. Mm, out in the nice. Good points, right? Getting sunlight and eating grass. Because not only are we, you are what you eat, but you are what you eat and what they ate. And so we want to stay away from chemicals and um, grain-fed beef that raises that inflammation and sugar level within the body. Um, Some other great benefits, the powerhouse of grass-fed beef really is something called CLA, and that's conjugated linoleic acid. It is a beautiful fatty acid that is essential for so many functions within A little overrated, in my opinion, CLA. But overrated. The great thing about it is how protective it is. And we know that it can help shrink tumors in the breast. No, colon. stop. 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 See, this is the problem I have with just... Actually, you know what? Let's, let's let her talk on about this. Go ahead. Tell me about how you're going to cure breast cancer from <laughs> organic fat and CLA. Go ahead. Keep, keep telling us. Um, it helps to reduce high blood pressure. It helps ward off um, cardiovascular and heart disease. It helps with insulin resistance. Um, it helps keep inflammation at bay. So it's just this beautiful essential fatty acid that we're so deficient in in America. All right, get lost. 657th view, view I just gave her. Nice. Feel real good, real good about myself today. Um, I exited the video. There was 20 seconds left in the video, and she didn't even mention one time why whey, grass-fed whey protein is beneficial. Unbelievable. I'm actually going to make an audible here. Uh, I'm on YouTube, right, for these sources, and I see one of my favorite guys to pick on here on the recommended video page. So let, let's get real brief into this. Let's see if those in the audience can pick up his voice and tell me who he is. Um, the video is called A Closer Look at Grass-Fed Beef. Just... I want to just hear him talk. I, I, I love this guy. Oh, he's too popular. He's a commercial on his uh, page. We'll, we'll let that we'll let that load up in a second. Um, are you guys fi- figuring out these arguments now? The hormones, the grass fed, the ethics, the, the, the like that. That's their main point um, so far. Uh, here we go. So about grass fed meat because it's not as simple as you might think. USDA defines grass-fed as an animal fed only mother's milk and grass or other greens its entire life, but it doesn't specify fresh or stored greens. Animals labeled grass-fed can be confined to pens, and they can be fed to hay here. or silage. That silage is dried. All meat. right. You're, that bored me already. That was Dave Asprey, folks. Bulletproof. Bulletproof loser. That was Dave Asprey. All righty. So we've got three product reviews I'm going to go through quickly. We heard the arguments. You guys know why they're advocating grass-fed whey now. No hormones, no antibiotics. Um, the cows are treated awesome. You know, there's great fat content in, in organic beef, but they self-admit that n- that none of that fat comes in the protein powder. So, aka, it's complete waste. Good for you guys. Here we are. Um, I just literally googled 
grass-fed whey protein and took the first three products that popped up. So again, I'm not nitpicking anything. Here we go. Uh, this is by Naked Nutrition. Grass-fed whey protein powder, a five-pound uh, container, five-pound container. Serving size is two scoop, uh, 30 grams. Uh, calories, 120. Total fat, two grams. Total carbohydrates, three grams. Protein, 25 grams. Ingredients are whey protein concentrate, and that's it. So here's the deal. Number one, probably tastes like crap. Number two, whey protein concentrate is the cheaper form of whey protein, uh, whey protein isolate, um, higher, higher concentrations of BCAAs, branch chains, um, superior product for you. Now, here's their little blurb on it. What is grass-fed whey protein powder? And this is just from uh, nkdnutrition.com. Uh, grass-fed whey protein comes from dairy cows that have a 100% grass-fed diet. The milk from cows is non-GMO. Uh, it's non denatured. The resulting whey protein is soy free. It's used to build lean muscle and aid recovery. We use careful manufacturing processes. Da 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 da. Don't let labels and big agribusiness fool you. Additives are for their bottom line, not your health. And it says here uh, no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or colors. 25 grams of protein, only one ingredient the actual protein, GMO free, soy free, gluten free, cold processed, yada yada yada. Guess what, folks? Price tag, 90 bucks. $89.99 for a five-pound canister of this whey protein powder that probably tastes like poop. Now, again, I didn't have it, so that's just my <laughs> – I'm just trying to uh, – definitely just trying to take a guess at it, take a swipe. But um, most often, protein powder by itself, especially with no stevia, no nothing, it's not going to taste very, very good. Um, but there you go. Again, $89.99. Here, <laughs> the reason it's so high is, as we've heard in previous videos, that these people, the farmers that are having organic farms, it is actually very, very, very expensive. You have to get approved by the government for you know X, Y, and Z in terms of the guidelines. You have to give certain product, you know, you have to give the cows a certain percentage of food, and that, that, you know, there's a bunch of like regulations on it where you just can't say you're you're, you're in an organic farm. There's a lot to it, um, so it's very, very expensive. You need a lot of land, you need grass. So again, that's where you're going to pay more as the consumer. All right. Next one we have is a, uh, this is the, let me pull this here up. What is this damn thing? Jaro Formulas. Jaro Formulas grass-fed whey protein it comes from South Australian cows. Um, it's fed grass year-round, not treated with growth hormone or antibiotics. The climate zone is supposed to be, uh, whatever, optimal for cows to roam in the open. It's a good source of calcium. Okay, we'll get the label. One scoop of protein powder does not list the grams. Uh, it's about 26 grams for one scoop. About 26 grams for one scoop. Calories, 100. Total fat, 1.2 grams. Carbohydrate, 3. And protein, 18 grams. Uh, ingredients, it's going to be 100% Grass-fed whey protein concentrate, again, a low qual a lower quality form of, of whey protein, uh, non-GMO sunflower lectin, natural chocolate flavor, organic cocoa powder, natural cho uh, natural coconut flavor, uh, and low hung gao. So again, probably a little better tasting than the previous one uh, because they are putting things into the flavor, that, that protein powder. Um, price tag... This is a 15 serving. Where the hell's the poundage on this damn thing? I don't like how how like sh to me it's almost shady. It really is that it's not as straightforward as I'd like it to be. What's it say on this damn thing here? It says it is a 313 ounce container. So it's less than a pound. 16 ounces in a pound. So all right, less than one pound. 20 bucks, 20 bucks. So if we were to use the previous uh, product, which was $90 for five pounds, well, five pounds of this would run you about 100 bucks. So this is technically a little more expensive uh, if you control for weight. There you have it, now almost uh, 20 bucks a pound. Okay, last one we have, protein series, 100% grass-fed whey protein isolate. Uh, this is a two-pound bag. 
The ingredient profiles, one scoop, 32 grams, 112 calories, zero grams of fat, zero grams of carbs, 28 grams of protein. Wow, I'm intrigued by that. Let's look at the uh, ingredients. Well, guess what? On this website, they make it so small you can't read it. Whey protein isolate and vanilla flavor and stevia. So there you have it. Now, whey protein isolate, again, a higher quality product than concentrate. So I give them props. Two pound bag, $59, 60 bucks. So again, this one, again, a little more expensive per pound, about $30 a pound. Um, and if you want to read their little blurb, again, it's like everything else. Made from nationally fed hormone-free cows. No artificial sweeteners, food dyes, gluten preservatives, yada, yada, yada. All right, cool. Now, done with it. So you've heard the arguments for grass-fed whey protein. You heard the arguments um, why, what makes it different, the hormones, the antibiotics. And then now you've heard the price points, what you're going to pay per pound, between $20 and $30 per pound. Uh, for their grass-fed way, and again, my can't, I'm excited because now now we're going to hop into uh, three quick scientific research articles to talk to you about what's actually going on with the filtration process, the isolation process, what actually makes it through to the final powder, and I think it's going to be eye-opening considering what you just heard from our three audio contributors today. You heard their fear-mongering, you heard their sensationalism. Well, time to do what we do best: is bring some common sense to this arena. Okay. First uh, first one I have here is an interview with Lane Norton. Lane Norton is a PhD, uh, I believe in exercise physiology. So he's knee deep in this stuff a lot more than a lot of these other people who are just theorists. They just, you know, or they're, they're super ripped and that's all they do. But they have no scientific backing in this industry. Um, Lane Norton, a PhD in it. Tell you what, man, not going to be many smarter people on the subject than he is. He's asked a question from mountaindogdiet.com. Speaking of chemicals, what are your thoughts on organic versus non-organic food in terms of gaining muscle and overall health? Have you personally seen a difference between an organic diet versus a non-organic diet in weight loss or muscle growth? His answer, no. Most data suggests that organic foods have little to no nutritional advantage over non-organic foods. I'm sure that many people will be angered to read that, but I'm sorry, folks. That's what the data has demonstrated thus far. It doesn't enhance protein quality. It doesn't seem to enhance vitamin mineral quantity or quality. Grass-fed beef may have more beneficial fatty acid breakdowns, but I would consider that a modest gain compared to the cost when you could simply add in an omega-3 supplement for a lot less money. That said, some people have said that they prefer the taste of organic food more, so more power to them. That pretty much knocks out of the ballpark. Um, you know, I encourage organic food if you can buy it, and I try to buy it, and there's some, some, some places that, that are putting out some options that are reasonable. Price comparison, Aldi's is like my favorite grocery chain right now. They're putting out a lot of great uh, organic line of products that are very comparable to non-organic, so I can get the the slight to moderate benefit without the massive price tag that usually comes with it. And so that I would encourage, but the rest of it, he's dead on. And I know the question is just about organics in general, but I'm trying to shape my argument now. I'm trying to shape what the science uh, actually says about this. And so there's a good way to start. And then if you just take an organic product and a non-organic product, the difference is not that massive. The difference mainly comes in the fat content, especially when it's done with cows, so like the beef and the dairy. It's the main difference is the fat. And you do get a little more healthy fat, but just like Lane said here, usually the price tag does not justify buying it. Like you can supplement healthy fats and literally make up the difference for a lot less of a price point. Next source I have for us, jimstepani.com. Jim Stepani, again, is a PhD. He is the uh, formulator and owner of the Gym Supplement Science line that you can find at GNC and Amazon. Um, I do use it myself, pre-workout and the protein powders. Um, so that's just kind of for the full disclosure stuff. Uh, but he has an article on his main website. It says, organic whey, is it waste or worth it? If you're wondering when I'm going to come out with an organic version of my Pro Gym blended protein powder, don't hold your breath. Before I explain, let me first give you some background on the topic of organic dairy items. If we were talking about organic dairy products like milk, cottage cheese, and Greek yogurt coming from organically raised and grass-fed cows, I would say yes, go organic. 
Same goes for organic fruits and vegetables, definitely worth it due to more micronutrients being present and less pesticides. But in the case of organic whey protein powder, no, absolutely not. I can understand how some might find this thumbs down, quote unquote, or on organic whey con, uh, hold on. I can understand how some might find this thumbs down on organic whey contrary to my thumbs up on organic dairy products in general. Since whey protein comes from milk, whey protein powder manufactured from milk that comes from organically raised and grass-fed cows must be better than whey protein processed from milk that comes from conventionally raised cows, right? Nope, that's incorrect and wrong, and here's why. First, you must consider where the benefits come from in milk sourced from organically raised and grass-fed cows, as well as how whey protein is manufactured. The main benefits of milk that come from organically raised and grass-fed cows are the higher amounts of essential omega-3 fats, CLA, and vitamin E, but whey is processed to isolate the protein from the carbs in the fat. In fact, a quality whey protein isolate has close to 100% of the fat removed. This means that if a protein powder manufacturer is using whey protein from organic milk, just about all the extra omega-3 fats, CLA, and vitamin E have been removed during the manufacturing process anyway. So it actually makes zero sense for the manufacturer to pay more for whey protein from organic milk, given the fact that all the additional health benefits are going to be completely remo- removed in the manufacturing process. Well, what about the protein? Now, hey, that's a good question. The protein in milk from organically raised and grass-fed cows has the same amino acid and structure as protein in conventional milk. Let me repeat. The protein quality is the same whether it's organic or not. Amino acids are amino acids. Well, what about antibiotics, hormones, and pesticides then? Here's the deal with that. None of those chemicals alter the structure of the whey protein molecules that are isolated from the milk protein. And due to the rigorous processing that whey protein undergoes to isolate the whey protein from everything else in the milk, none of those contaminants should be left behind and make it into the jug of protein powder you're buying. So again, there's no difference between regular whey protein and organic grass-fed protein in regards to any contaminants. All of which begs another question. If organic and grass-fed whey adds none of the beneficial nutrients to whey and removes no more of the, of the negative components, why do some protein manufacturers even bother to offer it? It's most likely due to the fact that the manufacturer is, ign- is ignorant regarding the benefits of organic and grass-fed milk and how the benefits fail to carry over to isolated whey protein. In a few cases, it may be that the manufacturers actually do realize the lack of benefit but are riding the wave of the organic movement and are assuming that the customer isn't educated enough to realize that organic and grass-fed whey provides no true benefit over regular whey. And since the customer is paying the higher price for it, it's an easy way for companies to make a buck. Don't get sucked into this organic trap and waste your money on organic whey protein. Sure, the milk that it was manufactured from was from organically and grass-fed cows. But the benefit from that superior milk is not carried over to the whey protein powder. Those benefits literally flush down the drain in some manufacturing facility. The only thing that carries over is the price. Whoo, boy. Jim Spawny, again, folks, PhD, exercise physiology. Lane Norton, exercise physiology, PhD. My sources is not Thomas DeLauer, some guy in a V-neck on YouTube. Or some lady that's preaching about ethics and I gave her her 658th view or whatever the hell she has now. Like, (laughs) do you see the difference in the quality of information and how... Um, in this case, Dr. Sapani gives the information in a direct yet entertaining way, but it's backed by the actual knowledge of this, of things. He's not, he's never in, in his article saying, well, inflammation in general, or you're going to get cancer from the artificial this and that. It's very scientifically based. He gives you the facts straight at you and puts his, puts his little spin on as he is still a human and not a robot. Is it sinking in yet? Is it sinking in yet? Just for the record, Jim Stepani's protein powder, uh, you can buy a four-pound tub for like 58 bucks. 
So again, a lot less than $20 per pound or $30 per pound. A two-pound container is $38, and it does con- contain whey protein isolate, the high quality, the higher quality form of whey protein. So again, just trying to give you a different, a different spin on things and give you different varieties so that you don't got to sit here and believe everything you read. The last thing I, I want to read for you, ironmagazine.com, May 5th, 2012, quote unquote, all natural grass-fed whey is all natural grass-fed whey better than regular whey? Now, this is man, written by a man named Will Brink. I don't know him, but I like his take on it. Are we ready to get into this? The latest trend in the highly saturated whey market is to push some all natural whey that's grass-fed and talk about the evils of supposed hormones in a regular way and then overcharge for your natural whey. Is there any truth in that? Should you pay excessive amounts for this natural whey that's grass-fed? There's there's a number of issues to address regarding those claims, but in the write-up, I'm going to address the hormone claims and antibiotic, as that seems to be the greatest of concern to people. And he's correct, right? That's all we heard in those videos. One question that has popped a few times in my email inbox relates to the issue of hormones and whey protein supplements. Are there hormones in your whey? It's not a simple yes or no answer, I'm sorry to say, but the short answer is people have nothing to fear. Being an animal-based product derived from milk, whey, like any other animal-based product, could potentially contain some naturally occurring hormones. The issue is which hormone and in what amounts. Modern testing abilities, being as sensitive as they are today, and this is in 2012, so logic reasons that we've gotten even better at this in 2016 actually 2017 now, right? Being able to search for things in parts per million, parts per billion, or even parts per trillion in some cases. Some hormone of some kind can be found in virtually anything that we as humans ingest, especially if it's derived from an animal source. So what's the scoop on whey? The major concerns are around the sex-based hormones, testosterone, etc., the growth hormones like uh, uh, IGF-1, and the non-hormonal components such as antibiotics. I will attempt to address these in particular to clear up any fears or confusion over the matter. Are there steroids in your way? Steroid hormones, being highly uh, soluble in fat, will be found in the lipid portion of whey, or any milk-based product for that matter. Any high-grade whey protein isolate is essentially fat-free, so you're not going to have to worry about that. For example, um, isolate contains less than one-tenth of one gram of actual dairy fat per gram serving, which is approximately one standard scoop found in most products. The additional fat listed on the can of most whey product isolates generally comes from the addition of small amounts of lectin, which is not an animal-based lipid, and and, or the flavoring that's being employed is where the fat comes from. An ion exchange whey protein, though not an optimal whey protein in my opinion, is will contain even less fat. So the reality is sex hormone levels in the lipid portion of milk fat and or fat in a whey is so low as to be either non-testable or virtually non-testable. Add to the fact that whey isolates are virtually fat-free, it's easy to see, it's a non-issue. What about the growth hormones? Growth hormones, uh, that's a bit more complicated. Growth hormone factors are protein-based hormones uh, and thus can be found in the protein fraction of animal-based products such as muscle. Uh, and milk. However, we will keep the discussion of these hormones specific to whey protein. Uh, milk and thus whey protein does contain minute amounts of BST. BST is simply the bovine form of uh, cow uh, hormone or growth hormone cows produce naturally. In humans, it's called human growth hormone, which is produced in the pituitary gland. However, this is the essential. Uh, this is the essential point. BST is not found in higher levels then will be found if the animals were not treated with BST. That is, whether they treat the animals with a growth hormone or not, they find that the BST levels of milk to be uh, are minute in, in the normal background levels. What are the levels of BST found in milk? It ranges from approximately zero to 10 parts per billion, and typically level found in milk is three ppb. That translates into approximately one microgram. That's one millionth of a gram, folks, per liter. That, ladies and gents, is what we call a truly minuscule amount. To add to the above, protein-based hormones such as BST, naturally naturally occurring or otherwise, are quite delicate, and digestion of these proteins means that they are destroyed when ingested. To sum up, I consider the risk of BST to be, again, a non-issue. Don't forget, the issue has been looked at extensively by the scientific community. Are there antibiotics in whey? 
Finally, we can address the possibility of any chem- contamination from the antibiotics given to the cows that may find its way into the milk and then the whey protein powder. Several studies have found that in a small number of cases, antibiotic re- uh, residues could be detected in commercial milk. This has caused some people to use organic, non-treated milk. Having done extensive consulting work in the whey industry, I can tell you all major manufacturers of whey protein powders test constantly for antibiotic residues as the milk industry is, in general does. The major whey manufacturers I have worked with test every single batch of incoming milk for antibiotic residues and they reject any batch that finds any amount, no matter how small. Only milk that gets a non-detectable stamp of approval after testing is considered to be used for the whey protein powder. Thus, there are no antibiotic residues in your whey supplements. I can't personally vouch for all whey manufacturers as I have not done consulting work for, for all the whey manufacturers in the world, but the handful that I have worked with had an extreme level of quality control over the issue, and I have no reason to to suspect other companies are not just as anal about it. Is this sinking in yet, folks? How is this? How how are you finding this information as compared to previous, previous talking points? I want to give you a takeaway. Look at what we're discussing. PhD Lane Norton, PhD Jim Tapani, um, this last author who's talking about scientific community and what we're discussing. Did we hear any of that from the previous three audio guys? No. All they said was, well, there's a, there's a few studies that, oh, there's some studies that do this. There's a massive difference between being a bro in a v-neck and being a PhD in a specific field. There's a big difference between paying 20 to $30 per pound for a protein powder that's going to have none of the massive benefit that it should have or paying $37 for a two-pound container or $58 for a four-pound container. Sometimes my industry sucks, folks. Sometimes it really does. But I hope that this little niche topic of grass-fed whey And all the hype about it and how it's so much healthier for you, you now understand that we've blasted through those arguments about hormones and how the actual isolation process really does a good job of wrapping it up. And I don't know if Thomas DeLauer and others are promoting grass-fed because they don't know the science. Maybe they are ignorant. Maybe Jim Stepone is correct. Maybe they're completely ignorant since this is not their expertise field. They're not PhDs. They don't get it. They don't care to research it. They're there to sell products. They're there to sell themselves as a celebrity. Maybe they do know, and they maybe it's it's even more dark and sinister than we want to believe. Maybe they do know, but the money, the money grubbing is just too great. It is a big problem. This money, this industry is a money maker, baby. Billions, billions, and billions is spent every year on supplementation. I hope you find value. I hope you find value in today's podcast and that you never, ever, ever buy grass-fed whey protein again if you've done so. The only asterisk that I put on that is if you are so overwhelmed by any ethical treatment of cows to the point that that overrides your uh, emphasis on pricing and or quality of your actual protein powder and it's just strictly for ethics – it's literally the only reason that anybody should ever buy grass fed away. It should not be as big of a market as it is. Feedback on today's podcast. We'd love to hear it. Facebook, Ramsley Fitness. Instagram, Ramsley Fitness. Email. I would love to hear from you. Email. Don't be scared. RamsleyFitness at gmail.com. Love to have you all on board for this heavy dose content episode. I look forward to seeing you all next week.